So I've now coalesced the data so that all the entries that are the same are adjacent to each other. Now I want to count it. Hmm. Well, this is where the cryptic nature of Unix command names crops up again. There is a command called unique, spelled U-N-I-Q. What it does by default is get rid of duplicated lines. So I'm going to run cut dash D comma field two fish.txt to select the species names, sort that, and run that through unique. As you can see, what it's done is take the two occurrences of marlin and squeeze it down to one. Take the three occurrences of shark and squeeze that down to one, and so forth. Unique only looks at adjacent duplicated lines. That's why I have to sort first. If I try running this without the sort, you can see that I've still got marlin duplicated and I still have shark duplicated. Why? Because they're not adjacent, and Unique only filters out adjacent duplicated lines. The reason it only does that is that otherwise it would have to read all of the data into memory before it could start filtering out lines. If it's only working on adjacent lines, it only has to remember the most recent line in order to decide what to do with the next, to discard it because it's a duplicate, or to keep it and make it the most recent because it's not a duplicate. So, up arrow twice gets me back to the command I wanted. I don't have to remember exactly what it was. I don't have to type it in again. I just do up arrow twice. And now I've got the unique set of species names. I can go a little further. If I say unique dash C, the dash C stands for count. What this shows me is how many lines there were in each group. Species occurred once, cod and flying fish occurred once, marlin occurred twice, shark occurred three times, and so forth. So I sorted to get the lines adjacent, and then I ask Unique to get rid of duplicated lines, but keep track of how many it got rid of, and show that to me. All right, this is getting me where I want. I now know how many days did I see sharks? Three days. How many days did I see marlins? Two days. How many days did I see all the other species? Just one except for one thing. Species is not a species. This word comes from the title line in my file. It's not actually a species of fish. And if I'm careful and I remember what to do, then I will save the output into scene.txt, nano scene.txt, kill the line with control K, I cut text is the command down here that kills a line. Save that, exit, and now I've got just the data I want, but this is the wrong way to do it. There's a manual step in there that I have to remember to do each time. It's going to slow me down, sometimes I'll forget, and I could accidentally slip and hit Control K twice and delete two lines of data, the title and one other, and that would be bad. I want to automate this, and I also want to be doing it all on the command line so that there's an accurate historical record. If I take a look at the last 20 commands I ran, that's history to get all of them, pipe to tail-20 to get the last 20 lines, I can see at line 130 what command I ran to create scene.txt, but I can't see what I did inside that nano session to modify the file. So an important step in my data pipeline has been lost. You know that I did something to the file, because you can see at line 131 that I opened it in an editor, but you don't know what I did. It's as if part of your experiment was hidden and wasn't written down, and immediately alarm bells should ring. So let's get rid of scene.txt and see what else we could do. If I go back to command 129 by typing exclamation mark 129, I don't have to hit up arrow, I can type exclamation mark in a command number and it will go back to that command. You can see that the shell shows me what it's about to do and then reruns the command. Okay, this is pretty cool. History tells me what I did. Exclamation mark, often pronounced bang, and a number reruns a particular command so that I don't have to hunt upwards with up arrow. How can I get rid of species? Well, in this case, 
I have seven lines of output, so I could say tail dash six. Right? I want everything except the first line. There are seven lines. Seven minus one is six. Yep, that gets me everything. This works, but it's not a good solution. Because what if the next data file I process has nine different species? Tail dash six will give me the wrong answer. It will throw away the title line and two of my data lines. Is there a way that I can get everything except the first line? Well, turns out there are two ways. Probably more than two ways, but there's two I'm going to show you. The first one is that I can actually use tail to do what I want, but I'm going to have to show you man, which is short for manual, tail. When you type man followed by a command name, Unix shows you the manual page for that command. The manual page has the name of the command, a synopsis, which is a very brief description, just a summary of what the command line flags are, then a description of what it can do. You're in a pager called more. If you hit spacebar, it goes forward a page. If you hit return, it goes down one line. So, byte blocks, bytes, dash f, dash f, dash n, dash r, Okay, there's the tail command. What if I say tail plus three fish.txt? Hmm. Tail plus five fish.txt. Ah, this seems to be doing what I want. What I saw in the man page that we were just going through is that if I take a look at fish.txt, there are 10 lines. If I cat fish.txt, there they are. If I say tail plus one fish.txt, it's not doing what I want. Hmm, I've misunderstood the command. Let's go back to man tail. Numbers having a leading plus sign are relative to the beginning of input. So plus C2 starts the display at the second byte of the input. Okay, so tail plus two fish.txt is giving me nine lines of output. Catfish.txt, yep. If I say tail plus two, that gives me everything except the first line, because it starts at line two and goes forward to the end. How did I know this? Well, I actually kind of half remembered it, looked at the man page, thought I understood it, obviously didn't, because I thought plus one would mean skip the first line, and had to experiment a bit. And unfortunately, you have to do this a fair bit when you're first learning Unix. Here's the problem, and it's sometimes called expert blind spot. Really, you want two things from documentation. You want a tutorial for a novice who's just learning a command or a system or a tool, and you want a reference guide for an expert who already understands the concepts and more or less knows what she's looking for and just needs to know is it dash capital F or dash lowercase g. That's two very different kinds of documentation, and something that serves one purpose is either incomprehensible or frustrating to somebody who's after the other. If you're a novice trying to figure out what command should I run, what's possible, the Unix man pages aren't very much help because the Unix command names aren't very suggestive. I mean, really, unique to count lines, right? cat to list a file, so you have to already know this much to be able to find what you're looking for. So man pages aren't good for novices. On the other hand, the sort of tutorial with lots of crosslinks and questions in it that's good for a novice is really frustrating for an expert who just needs to find one thing and get on with it. This is not unique to programming. This reflects the change that happens as you move from novice to expert. As a novice, you don't have the right categories. You don't have the right map of the terrain. As an expert, you do, and you just need to know, is this 186 York Street or 185 York Street?
you already know where York Street is in the city of Toronto and how everything fits together and whether you should be going north or south. As a novice, you don't even know what the grand layout of the city is. There is no way to fix this. As you go from being a novice to an expert, what's actually happening is you are developing or acquiring or growing the mental categories, the buckets that I was talking about in the introduction. Once you have those, things like man pages are the right answer. Until you have those, they're not. And once you have those, it's very hard to remember what it's like to not have them. Once you've seen the pattern in an optical illusion, you can't unsee it. Once you've learned something, once you've got the right mental map, it's very difficult to unlearn that mental map and go back to beginner's mind and say, this is what it's like to not even have the right conceptual categories. And this is why so much computer documentation and other kinds of documentation is so bad. It's written by people who know too much. They don't remember what it's like to have beginner's mind. And it's called the expert paradox. So, I've just shown you a way here to use the tail command with an option you might not have thought to look for to do what we want. I can go back to my previous command and pipe that to tail plus two to get rid of everything except the word species because remember Species is the first line. We don't want it in our data set, so we have to get rid of it. Now, if tail plus two starts at the second line and goes to the end, you'd think that logically head plus two would go up to but not including the last line of the file. It doesn't. Tail knows how to do a plus argument to do an offset. Head doesn't. They're written at different times by different people. Right? And that inconsistency is one of the hardest things about Unix programming or about programming in general. One of the reasons we don't use Perl in this course, even though we did in the first couple of years, is that the inconsistencies in Perl impose an extra cognitive burden on learners. Python, which is the programming language we'll see later on, is a more consistent language, so you have to keep fewer exceptions and exceptions to exceptions in your head. One of the reasons I don't particularly like R, and I'm not fond of MATLAB either, is that there are a lot of inconsistencies and special cases in both of those languages. Things like Python are proof that they don't have to be there, but we're stuck with them. And honestly, as somebody who speaks English as a first language, with its spelling and grammar rules, I can't really point the finger at R and MATLAB.